armored core law, Great Wall, the Great Wall of the Desert and the fastest land base arms fort. This is the Great Wall Arms Fort. History The production date of the Great Wall Arms Fort is never disclosed to the public. However, we can guess that like the spirit of Motherworld, this arms fort has been in the field of action for quite a while, perhaps during the formation of the League. It's not as old as the spirit of Motherworld, but its weakness is already known as we can see in the mission to defeat Arms Fort Great Wall by Algebra in the Lowland Desert. Given its nickname taken from the same book as the Desert Wall, it's fair to speculate this is where the Arms Fort spent most of its operation period protecting GA, its creator's assets, and being used to combat Nex and other corporation forces. As Global Armaments, as we know, was not interested in being part of the League. As to them, there were too many rules and they did not like the idea of being told what to do by their rival, Omir Science. While the battle reports of the fort are once again a cooperation secret, the warm battle that is known will be its last against Strayed, who with intel from Algebra, would go about sending this wall of power and might tumbling into the sands it once rode upon. This was done by attacking its power source located at the front of the train-like arms fort, making it explode. However, this said, there is also a chance that Strayed never encountered the Great Wall arms fort, instead leaving its fate unknown, although it will be suggested years and years later that the fort will be used to transport the Reaper squad in Armored Core Verdict Day. And that really is the history of the Arms Fort. But now let us take a look at this Great Wall, which even the representative from Algebra warns straight about saying, Great Wall is one of the most powerful land-based weapons operating today. It's big and lumbering, but don't underestimate it. It comes with some serious firepower, armor, and low capacity. And he is not wrong, for the Great Wall can be over 14 kilometers long when it has all its carriages. I shall call them, although the Armored Core and New Order for next will call them vehicles. This does include two power carriages, four armored carriages, and several cargo transport carriages. However, the most common setup for the Great Wall is half that size, at 7 kilometers, which includes one power carriage, four armed carriages, and one cargo transport carriage. With this information, it's possible to suggest that the Strait did not finish off all of the Great Wall, as such the remains of it maybe is what the Reapers would use years later. But this is all speculation. All these carriages would be heavily armoured, meaning next weapons could not penetrate them, and all serve a different role. From what we can see, the cargo carrier carries heavy, large-scale weapons, like the Quasar. As for the armed carriages, they serve as part of the main offensive and defensive capabilities of the arms fort, either having two large grenade gatling guns or missiles on top of them, as well as being as read on page 118 in Armored Core, A New Order for Next, a hangar which serves as a base for the troops on board, and a maintenance area for the normals and other weapons. As for the power carriage, it really is as it says on the tin, it's where the generator to run the arms fort is kept. One of the more interesting things about the fort is that it can discard carriages much like a train as seen in Strayed's mission, and it can do this as seen on screen now, where the connections of the carriage will tilt when making sharp turns and expand and contract. The Great Wall itself works like you could say the tilting trains in our own world. The final note about the Great Wall is the armed carts are big enough to fit a Nex inside, as shown when Raiden shows up in one during the hard version of this mission. This short report on the Great Wall comes to a close.